This is my 1977 Commodore PET computer on display in my living room at the moment. I've shown this one on my channel before. A couple of years ago when I first got it, I did a repair video on it. When I first got this one, I was a little confused. I didn't know much about the PET at the time, and there were a number of features on this one that uh, I was not used to seeing on other PETs. I've learned a lot about these early PETs in the last couple of years, so I thought I'd do a show and tell video about this model and talk about some of the changes that Commodore made to the PET in the first few months of production. The feature on this PET that confused me first was the case badge. This is a painted metal plate, not the adhesive labels that I was used to seeing on normal PETs. I posted a few photos to Facebook asking about the badge, and someone else pointed out that the cassette drive didn't look right either. This isn't a C2N type drive, and it doesn't have the white keys that most of the early pets have. There was even a former Commodore employee who was there in 1977 while these were being made who told me that the screen bezel should be blue because all of the early ones were blue. So I started doing some research and I started paying close attention to all the other pets that I would see online. I created a spreadsheet to keep track of the different case badges, tape drives, and other visible features to try and make sense of all the different versions of the pet. In 1977, Commodore had been taking pre-orders and deposits for the pets since the winter CES in January. And at the start of October, they still hadn't shipped any units. They were under some pressure to get some units shipped. So in October, they did a production run of 100 units. And these shipped mostly to magazines and software developers. The production line and the testing jigs weren't ready yet. So these were all assembled and tested by hand. This particular pet is serial number 0010165. Pet serial numbers all started with 001 followed by four digits. So this one is number 165. We know there were only 100 units produced in the fall of 1977, so there must have been numbers skipped. Commodore famously tends to skip around and use serial numbers out of sequence, probably deliberately to confuse competitors. On the inside, on the main PCB, there's a sticker here with a date and initials. The date is when the board passed testing and the initials are the technician who did the testing. In this case, the board passed initial testing on 20 October, but probably failed during burn-in and was repaired and retested on the 24th. This was confirmed by John Fagans in the Commodore Historical Society Facebook group. He's one of the engineers who designed the PET, and he was also involved in setting up the production line and testing procedures in 1977. This other handwritten number here was used to track PCBs during production testing and rework. This is effectively a PCB serial number. I don't think these stickers were used past the first production run, but a handwritten number like this can be found on all PET PCBs going all the way through to the end of 1978. For this first production run, Commodore didn't have the OEM cassette drives that they would use in the later PETs, so they used the same tape drive that they had used in the wooden prototype and in earlier pre-production units. This is actually a Sanyo M1540A audio cassette recorder Commodore just covered up the Sanyo logo with their own sticker here. In the Commodore Historical Society Facebook group, John Fagans wrote that he and Don Webster drove to a local electronics store in Palo Alto and bought a pallet of these tape drives. The drives were modified by Commodore, who replaced the PCB and added the cable, and the corner here was cut off to avoid interference with these heat sinks. The mounting bracket that holds the drive in the case is different from the later OEM cassette drives. Also, the size and shape of the opening in the case here is different for this drive and the OEM drive, so they're not interchangeable. Only 100 of these were made, so if you have one or you find one with the Sanyo tape drive in it, you can be reasonably sure it's from the first production run in October 1977, or maybe from a few earlier prototypes that were made before that. The screen bezel is black, and it is original. All of the first 100 that I've ever seen with the Sanyo drive all have black screen bezels. As far as I can tell, there weren't any or many units produced in November. Production didn't really start until December, maybe late November, and that's when they changed the screen bezel to blue and started using the OEM cassette drive with the white keys. The screen bezel changed back to black again around mid-1978 when the PET started shipping with the uh, C2N type tape drive. There are some exceptions, of course, but generally speaking, if the cassette drive has black keys, the screen bezel would be black. And if the cassette drive has white keys, the screen bezel would be blue. 
Commodore continued using this type of case badge through the end of December. The badge is a thick metal plate. It's painted and it's raised on standoff so there's a small gap between the badge and the case. From the data that I've collected, it would seem that they switched to adhesive labels for the case badge right at the start of the new year on January 1st, maybe give or take a few days. But in general, if you have this type of case badge, it was made in 1977. If you have an adhesive label, it was made in January 1978 or later. One of the other quirks about these early pets, at least with this PCB, this is assembly number 320081 is that on the cassette port here and the cassette port number two in the back, there are no signals on the top side of these pins. They're not mirrored. The cassette port signals are only on the bottom side of the board. This version of the PCB uses uh, Centertech 2316B ROM chips instead of the MOS 6540s. Everything on it is original except for a couple of parts that have been replaced. Uh, one RAM chip and this AND gate here at C6. And of course I put new belts in the tape drive. On the back, this one has some kind of a number engraved here, company asset tag number or some kind of an identification number. Inside the monitor, the PCB has a sticker on it here with this number. I'm not sure what this means. This might be a, another board tracking number. And the ground wire has a disconnect here for some reason. Well, I guess that's it for now. Thanks for watching.